Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Vampire the Masquerade V5 Chronicle of Vancouver Adjacent by Night. I am Storyteller Steve, and let's do a quick roundtable to introduce you to all of our vampires that are here for this particular evening. Uh, Patrick will be showing up at a dramatically appropriate moment, hopefully. If not, um, we will uh, proceed with the story as we come to it. All right, so let's do quick round table let's start off with brennan hi i'm brennan i play charlotte she's a venture and she's in no trouble at all not not even a little bit not even a little bit there is no trouble to be had in vancouver for There's, vampires there is no trouble for the rich <laughs> Zach. hey i'm zachary vaudo i'm playing the malkavian charlie lawrence who is completely fine and stable and not panicked Malkavians are known for how calm and, and collected stable. they are. Yes, they're very stable. Stable geniuses. There's my, you know, Trump reference for the day. It was usually it's like well coached stakes, but this time I'll switch it up. Uh, Samantha. Hi, I'm Samantha McLarty, and I'm playing the La Sombra, Elena Cortez, and uh, she's pretty sure this is all going to go to hell soon. So gonna be bad why would it go to hell <laughs> i'm the storyteller nothing ever goes to hell when i'm the storyteller lex hi i'm lex i play cassandra the toreador and she is handling her newfound responsibility very well with the extra back room that we discovered what it is <laughs> all right uh when last we saw the kindred Empire peoples of the city of Vancouver who are actually in the downtown area of Vancouver. Uh, there's another chronicle that I run on Vancouver by night, which is they're doing something completely different, which we'll find out more about tomorrow. Uh, when last we saw this particular coterie, they were making plans to deal with the building that they had inherited, uh, which has a bunch of Let's say not happy things that are happening in the building, but sh you know Charlotte would know more about that than I would. So as we open our scene, uh, I think, and somebody just put hashtag meat room in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we have a fan. Okay, uh, so. <laughs> Uh, we're going to open our scene at the, I believe, mausoleum as everybody is going to be going their separate ways to determine how they're going to be getting to back to their building at Alexander Industries. Take it away, Kindred. I believe Elena and Harley were going to go back towards Harley's place so that he could grab some things and then he was going to meet us over at the building. Uh, so Elena was going to head that way, and mm -hmm. Charlie just going to follow them because it's that or cut or go straight there. And ha if, have if, fun if, if, getting if, your pocket computer <laughs> or your your extra long Ethernet cable. Which is funny because right now I'm on an extra long Ethernet cable to get the internet in this particular room. It's actually really good for streaming. <laughs> yeah, Very we were going that for way. Hacking. We were going that way, which leaves Charlotte and Cassandra at the mausoleum to hang there or head right over or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so Charlotte and Cassandra, are you going to be heading directly over to Alexander Industries? Got a minute. Oh. How do you want to get there? You want to take the limo, the helicopter? I want to take the helicopter. Let's no take questions. the helicopter. I think it's time for the helicopter. To be fair, it's a really, it's a really short trip and there's nowhere to <laughs> land the helicopter on the mausoleum. So that- I think we're going to, to take the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, that, that may have to get Storyteller overridden. Unless you really, really want to take the helicopter. It's just a pilot, like, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but the pilot's like, where the fuck am I supposed to land? But we don't want to drive. Um, the financial district is fairly close to where you happen to be, so it might be one of those instances where you could just walk over if you were. 
I like it. Or take an Uber. Oh, but what about her feet? My feet, they're already sore from walking up all of those stairs. Cassandra, would you mind carrying me on your back? I would. Why don't we try the limo? Okay, well, I'll take the limo then. Meet in the middle. Uh, so there. it takes a couple of minutes after Cassandra places the call. The limo pulls up out front. Uh, the driver, you can definitely tell, is curious as to why you have him driving such a shithole area late at night. <laughs> Oh, I see you're wondering why I'm at this horrible bar. I mean, this, um, this, uh... Charming. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. I haven't had the coat of paint done yet. Yeah, it's... no, we should definitely get a coat of paint done. It's got, it's got good bones. It's rustic? Rustic was the word I was looking for. I just couldn't get past the puddle that I stepped in on the way out. It's, it's cozy. Yeah. Pea-scented cozy. It has personality. Good. That's a, that's a good sell. You should put that in the, in the paper where you're selling. Uh, yeah. So on that particular point, uh, <laughs> is there any other conversation happening on the way over? Yeah. So the reason why I think it's important that we have a ranking system is because, you know, if, if you have a one to five, then you know, not to say that this would ever have to happen. But if I ever had to get rid of one person, if I ever had to cut ties with an asset, then I know which one automatically and I don't have to stress over it. It's really simple that way. Yeah, I mean, it's your top five way. is very important. Yeah. And don't worry about it. If there wasn't a dog, you'd be number one. I respect small business owners. Well, I appreciate that. I think yeah. the dog is number one for everyone. So I think, it's, I think it's time that you move me a little bit lower down on your list. I think it's important. You're, you're gunning for the number two spot too? I would like the number two spot. I think we could have a mutual number two agreement. I, I, could, I could see my way to that. All right. And I will pay for the first coat of paint on your new building. Sold. Yes. Number two. <laughs> And at that particular point, due to the fact that the financial district is really close <laughs> to Gastown, uh, you arrive at Alexander Industries. So uh, do you think we should wait outside or do you want to go look at the meat room or maybe try and find that fairy room that I was so excited to find that didn't? We are definitely not going to the meat room, just the two of us. Fair. Definitely not. What about the spider room? Still no. Still okay. no. Is there any room that you would be willing to go into? Maybe we could find if there's a, a sex swing like in your bar. You think there's a sex floor here? I wouldn't believe that there was a meat room. <laughs> Valid point. I... Which floor do you think it would be? Random guess. Well, there isn't a 69th floor, so I don't think it would be that one. The non-existent floor. Yeah, maybe uh, the ninth room on the sixth floor. I'm in. So you're just going to go <laughs> to the sixth floor? <laughs> room 609? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we are mature adults. Yes, yes. I was, I was picking up on that. And on that note, we're going to flip back over to the other particular group before I reveal what's in room 609. Uh, so Harley would be going into his secret room and telling Elena and Zach that he would be catching up to you later. And just go ahead with it. Yes, yeah, so I guess Charlie and Elena and Florence can just head towards the towards Alexander Industries, right? Sounds good to me, yeah. I mean, yeah. Step walking in that direction, Charlie just kind of like. Are you all right, Charlie? Mm. I, I could I could say yes. You could say yes. Are, are you are you saying yes? Is that what they're doing? No, no, I'm not. I didn't think so. No. Uh, it's been a very eventful twenty-four hours. Uh, it has. 
kind of trying to grasp it. I, I usually do a lot of bookie work and other financial work. I don't do uh, a lot of dodging hitmen work and negotiating with evil corporation work and try not to die work. I can see that. I would say though, you know, considering, I don't think you would be very bad at doing the, you know, dodgy hitman work. Oh, uh, not really my thing. Just say. I think you're good to pull it off. Mm -hmm. Th thank, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I. Uh, anyway, um, hmm. I'd like to not, you know. I've had a choice. I'd like to choose the not gonna die part uh, over the, you know, fun and excitement of gonna die part, but we're kind of thrown into the fun and gonna die part. So here we are. Um, hmm? And I don't know. I, maybe maybe it's more your thing than my thing, but I'm kind of getting have to get back into that sort of thing. I told you before not to worry. I told you I would protect you, didn't I? You did. Uh -huh. You did. I meant it, if that makes you feel any better. I'm 75% believing it now, <laughs> yes. I think that's, that's a little bit better than what it was before, considering before I think I was at, what, a 0% it, it's ratio? A, it's a very big improvement, yes. I, I, thought, I thought it might be. Um, I kind of owe it to you, I think. Maybe just a little bit. If you say so, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I can work with that. OK, Thoris, I'm so proud of us. We're getting along just fine. Yeah, <laughs> doing great. Mm-hmm. Doing great. Um, one caveat: uh, the, mm -hmm. the making sure that I'm protected thing probably will work better if you stop trying to open up all the doors at the building. Maybe. <sighs> or counter proposal is that I open the doors without you being present. That is statistically the same as not protecting me be and because you're going to die. That's a fair point. It's, 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 a, one, exactly it's a one to one ratio that. at that point. I didn't exactly consider that. My apologies. Yeah. And I, we could take a vote because, you know, this is not exactly, a, I can't necessarily make this decision that no, we cannot open any more doors. It's not my building. So uh, if, if Charlotte wants to open the doors, I am the chief of security, so I kind of have to do it. Do you understand I, the problem a little bit? I don't like the logic train that you're using. <laughs> it's true, though. I, I mean, know, that's why I don't like it. She's my employer now, right? She's your employer, so if you, she tells you you have to go up there unless you're going to quit. It's not a government thing. It's not like a general thing. It's not, you know, hierarchy, follow orders, or everything goes to hell. It's employment. We have jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. running the finances doesn't involve opening up the, mm, the, the M room door. The meat room? Please don't. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. No, um, I understand that for you, it is, it's not in your description, your job description to do that, but it kind of is for me. I guess. So, so, and if you want me to keep you safe, then you're going to have to be with me for me to do that. So you kind of have to come with me when I open all the doors. You're trying don't to talk worry. me into going into the doors. I don't want to go. Into I it. never said that at all, not one time. You tried to get me to go into the other room at the at the bar too, and that is not our employment thing. And I still feel strange about that. Uh, okay, well, but... that was just because it was kind of funny. Okay, that's I out of your job description, funny. but I understand. 
I can be funny. I don't have to have that in my job description to be funny. It's true, and I will I'll pet Florence because I just heard her bark, and I will calm her down. <laughs> I think she's warming up to me just a little bit. Yeah, Florence is definitely not warming up to her. her <laughs> but I will lie and go, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, I promise if we go into the meat room or the spider room, which I'm not looking forward to that one, or the other rooms, whatever's in those rooms, I'm not going to let it kill you or take you and make you into a web and eat you later. That is a very specific set of things, but I appreciate that. I'm I trying would, to be nice. I would appreciate... I would appreciate not opening the doors unless you absolutely have to, because if you're going to go off on your own to open the doors, I'm going to feel obligated to make sure that you don't get killed, and that means that the chances of me getting killed go up, and that's... So wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that you're kind of feeling obligated that you're going to have to somewhat in a weird way protect me as well? Because mm -hmm. I think that's what you just said. I, mean, I don't want you going alone into rooms that are obviously going to kill you. That's we are dumb. making progress. It's dumb. I don't want any of any of you all doing that. It's dumb. All right. Well, if you can convince Charlotte that we should not look at the other rooms, then we know Speak. that's not going to work. Smash cuts of Charlotte. opening a door, <laughs> opening <laughs> other doors. <laughs> Uh, let's refocus a little bit over to Alexander Industries and room 609. <laughs> um, so you, who, who's taking the lead in this particular instance? I mean, I can do it, but you seem to be the expert in this scenario. In opening doors? In having sex rooms. I don't really think it's a sex room in there. What else would you use it for? Computers? Surely the previous owner had a sense of humor. Oh, surely. He seems the type. Yeah. What with all the people trying to kill him or being hired to kill us by him or mm -hmm. something. It's really funny when you think about it. Like I was in a closet yesterday and now I'm getting hunted down by a bunch of assassins. That is funny. Yeah. And then I'm going to open the door. As you open the door. <laughs> no, Something horrible there. happens. Yeah, it's, it explodes the entire building. Uh, no, it, <laughs> you open the door and it's, you know, office furniture. There's a desk in there. It looks kind of like in a corner suite. Um, but... Give me a wits and awareness. And for everybody playing the home game, take a drink. <laughs> uh, three. Also three. Ooh. Um, you You essentially kind of start to dismiss this particular room. Uh, as you go to close the door, though, there is a, like a paperweight on one of the desks. And it slides slightly, and then it falls off the desk. Just before you close the door. Oh, it's the ghost room. I should have known there was going to be a ghost room. They seem to have a room for everything else. Makes sense. Do you want to investigate the ghost room further, or is that not close enough to ferry for you? Invisible spirits, fairies. Close enough. Let's go see. Close enough. And I will examine the paperweight that fell. <laughs> uh, are you using any supernatural abilities to do so? No. Is it heavy? <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to weigh down paper. 
Mm. Mm. This appears to be a weight for weighing down paper. Do you think it's a clue? Do you think it's a clue? I don't, no. Yeah, no. I don't know why it fell. <laughs> Is it linked to the door? Open the door. I open and shut the door and generally just fuck around and see if we can get the paperweight to do something else spooky. Yeah, nothing, nothing happens. This is such a waste of time. I knew we should have gotten something to eat. <laughs> I always make that suggestion. Maybe we're just the wrong people to be investigating the paperweight. Who do you think would be better? Uh, What's your top five people for investigating paperweights? <laughs> Number one, Elena. She seems good at investigating stuff. Mm -hmm. Number two, Charlie. He knows weird stuff. This seems up his alley. Yeah, Andy can count how many paperweights there are. <laughs> are, are you having difficulty with the one? Well, it's dark in here. There could be more. Weren't you supposed to save this business? Yeah, not its paperweights. <laughs> I'm sure this paperweight, they bought it for $1,000 or something, look, looking at all the other records. <laughs> Especially if it's an experimental ghost paperweight. Experimental corn paperweight. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to eat it. You're uh, not supposed to eat most things. <laughs> it's at that point in the really odd conversation about the paperweight that uh, one of the drawers opens up. Like you just slowly start sliding open. This room's definitely haunted. For sure. Do we want to continue to be in the haunted room or should we leave? I am going to look inside the drawer before we abandon the haunted room. Uh, in the drawer, you see a bunch of papers that look like you know, it's, it's kind of like you had left a bunch of papers in a desk for like decades possibly even longer they look really kind of like weathered and old i'm gonna try to extricate these papers without them just crumbling uh yeah it's easy enough to do like they're they're just it, they have like sort of like a, a film on them like a film of dust almost but it's just kind of like it's a little bit on the sticky side for your fingers but uh, it just looks like it's actually like typed out as opposed to anything printed on uh, like any laser printer or anything like that. Oh, do the thing where you go. <sighs> oh, I do the thing where I go. <sighs> she, narrator voice, she does <laughs> the thing where she goes. <sighs> and what do they say? Yeah, there's. it's not really like any dust or anything on it. It's just like sort of like a sticky film. What do they Maybe say? Maybe this was a anything? sex room. Uh, the, it's with regards to Alexander Industries. There's like a bunch of information about uh, like how it was created and when the building was created, that sort of thing. Did building we accidentally was... find something useful? We might have. And if we did, then it wasn't accidental. We knew this. Of course. There are no coincidences or accidents in business. So we'll take our paper and our paperweight. Both very important. Thank you, ghost. Yes, thank you, ghost. You've been most hospitable. Thank and you the for door, being like, a meat room. <laughs> the drawer slowly closes as you leave headed towards, I'm guessing, the meat room or your own floor, possibly? <laughs> Our own floor. We'll yes. avoid the meat room. Are you sure? It's, it's still an option. But the only asking the ghost if it wants to come with. You, you had no response, like, at all. I mean, we wouldn't know, but <laughs> if you want to come with, we would appreciate your company. Okay, but where's the ghost going to land on your top five? Um, I feel like when you're incorporeal, then there's like a separate list because it's kind of a d another dimension. That's fair. That's so fair. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair to compete with uh, three dimensional humans when you're a fourth dimensional being, if that makes any sense. 
That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as they are headed up to uh, their particular floor, uh, Elena and Charlie are making their way into Alexander Industries. Yep, just open the door for Elena. Here we are. Thank you. Mm. That was very kind of you. Um, <laughs> let, her, let her go in, followed by Florence, followed by me. <laughs> and then, yeah, just... uh. I guess up to their up to their floor. Mm-hmm. Our floor. Uh, you would all uh, actually both groups would probably meet essentially roughly around the same time on it that meet. particular. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence! Running into you guys here at this place at this where we arranged to meet. I, I was I was about to be very confused because I thought that we agreed to meet here. Who would have ever thought? Yeah. I. Charlotte leans over to Cassandra. That's how you keep the upper hand. Remember that when you're dealing with bar patrons. Um, business tip number one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, so, Elena, how long have you and Harley been married? Uh, what? They're not married. N- no, no, we're, we're not married. I. I what made you think that? Well, you live together. You argue like you're married. I just you assumed. do argue like a married couple. No, we are not married. We've just known each other for a very, very long time. Ah, like married people. Not like married people. It is. He is my friend. Ah. I think they call it common law. Now, Cassandra and I. It's not the other. same thing. Cassandra and I have known each other forever, and we do not talk the way that you two talk. That's a different mm-hmm. thing. Oh, there's. There are a lot of layers there that I do not have time to explain to you right now. Like but there's a onion. lot. It's enough. A married onion. A no, cake. not. There's not anything about married, nothing. We are not married. It is not like that. Our you know what else friend. has layers? Wedding cake. <laughs> I said that. We. I did, not... did you actually? I didn't yeah. hear you. <laughs> yeah, he did. It's so much better for Charlotte to steal it. It's perfect. <laughs> she just she heard him say it and stole it. <laughs> we are not married, okay? That no, I'm not, not married. They're not married. Harley is not married. Not yet. We're not married. No, if there's not going to be any married. That's not no. Out of the head now. Bye. Goodbye. Oh. No. Okay. What have you two been up to? We were looking for a sex room, but we found Who's? sticky papers. And we're you're going to talk clues. to me about being married, and you're going to be looking for a sex room with Cassandra. Uh-huh. You, you don't look for a sex room with your wife. That is strictly mistress territory. <laughs> so, yeah, I have more questions now, but what did you find? Paperweight and some old paper. And a ghost that may or may not be with us right now. Oh, yes, we may have made a new friend. Six. Sixth floor. Six. Oh, Make you went. that, Charlie. You went looking in another room that <laughs> meant opening doors <laughs> that probably shouldn't open. Okay. See, watch. Spirit, if you're with us, please commune. It's at that point that who is <laughs> holding the paperweight? Wasn't Charlotte holding the paperweight? And I yeah, the she papers? kept the paperweight, yeah. So you're holding the paperweight in, mm-hmm. in your hand? Mm-hmm. Uh, you feel like the hand with the paperweight kind of getting tugged down? It's going down. See? See? There it is. There it is. It's like a Ouija board. Oh. I think you're just lowering your hand. No, it's, no, it's heavy. Yeah, I, I don't think that that constitutes as a ghost. I'm sorry, I just can't I, see it. I, just I do not it. have the resources to confirm whether or not you are just lowering your hand, but I, I statistically you are just lowering your hand to confirm I agree. your own statement. Does well, anyone I saw the spooky drawer the unseen? I do not, and that's the problem. Oh, I do. <laughs> or that's oblivion side. I I <laughs> or oblivion side. I don't have it. I didn't take that one. Cassandra has sense the unseen though. Hey. All right. Let us activate the old sense the unseens.
Uh, one. Um, you open up your senses to try to see if there's anything otherworldly happening, and you see, like, kind of a green glowing hand that is wrapped around uh, Charlotte's wrist and kind of forcing it down, but that's with one success, that's all you're able to see. Oh, well, that's something. No, we've got ghosts. Definitely ghosts. What's it's your like, specialized um, see? Spooky, disembodied hand. That sounds like a ghost to me. Okay, yeah. so you two both say that they're ghosts, and she's the only one that can see the ghosts. And again, we both, Charlie and I are thinking that, you know, maybe it's just... You know, you two are both very special. Very special, and we'll, we'll just, we're gonna go with that. Let's go, Charlie, let's go. If it is a ghost, then we should probably put the paperweight away from us. I mean, he's not yeah. violently pulling me down. Yet. <laughs> he's like got a, the point. It's like a gentle caress. For now. Did the disembodied hand seem especially malevolent? Uh, it does not seem malevolent. Like it, um, it's basically kind of like a, it, it looks like it's an old, like wrinkled kind of hand that's just green. Like it's got like a, an ethereal green glow about it. I mean, it led us to these papers and mm -hmm. I hand the papers over to Charlie. And it could have closed the door in front of us, like in one of those horror movies, and it opened it for us. And the drawer. Those are fair points, and I'll take the papers precariously and just look them over. What do the papers say? Uh, the papers are a description of, like, the kind of formation of Alexander Industries. Uh, like, it goes back 70 years, and it it outlines like financials from that particular point in time and there is a loan to uh alexander devonshire from pentex to create alexander industries interesting uh is there anything else on the, the formation financials like did the financials seem to make more sense back then than they do now or is it just consistent weird oh yeah like, like the financials like back then like just from your knowledge of uh, looking at financials, just it completely and utterly makes sense back then. Like it, everything lines up where it should be. It doesn't look like things are completely off. Yeah, so it all makes a hundred percent sense, except for the fact that Pentex kickstarted this company. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's that's the that's the big thing. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so I'll, just, I'll look over and go. Well, good news. At one point, this company was solvent and made sense. But it's good news. Yes. The bad news is that it was kickstarted by Pentex, oh, who is that's... now the top client of this company with all the numbers that don't make sense, <sighs> which kind that... of reinforces the whole shell company thing that I was saying. But, you know, I'll just hand the papers back. <laughs> Does that mean that Pentex technically owns the company? Unless the loan has been paid off, it probably would imply that a little bit. Is there any so way we can look means... into that? Yes, I can. <laughs> I Assuming that there is any legible record of any of the numbers at all. That Sandra! Isn't just, a, isn't just a bingo board of rotating numbers out. Yeah, so, uh, Sandra comes running out. Uh, uh, Charlotte, yes. Yes. Get him what he needs. Uh, and just to cut in, storyteller, would yep. that information on like this loan have been in the stuff that Harley found that I looked through already, or do I have to like pull that s separately? It would not. Okay. Uh, this like the the papers that you had, uh, they basically look like they've been that they they were kind of like something that someone hasn't gotten around to scanning ever. Okay. okay cool. Uh, so I will just. I will then take the papers back again uh, from Cassandra and hold them up and go, I need any information about the starting loan that Alexander Industries took out 
The starting loan that Alexander Industries took out from Pentex about 70 years ago. If there's any information about where that currently stands, that would be very, very helpful. Please and thank you. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, that's down in uh, records, though. What number is that? Uh, please be the, the basement. Please be the basement. That's the sixth floor. I believe that is where these papers came from. Okay, uh, it's going to take a long time to get through all of that. Is there a f some sort of reference file system of what's recorded down there? That like that of Dewey Decimal. Uh, if there is, but there's <laughs> a lot of records that we were supposed to eventually get around to digitizing, but no one has actually done such yet. Great. If I could have the record system that you have, maybe I can get a sense of it and put it together. Uh, the, make the record system is me. also on the sixth floor. I go with you, Charlie, if you need help. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the ghost floor and I'll just There's... trudge in that direction. <laughs> I will follow. Heavy hearted. I'll put trudge. my hand on Charlie's back and just kind of pat it as he's walking. Okay, okay. And Florence will like, like hugging my leg as Elena follows me. <laughs> Should we go with them? It wouldn't hurt. I wouldn't I'll mind call, visiting. I'll just call back, please. <laughs> uh, please make sure that Harley knows where we are. Tell, what is this? Okay, I'll, I'll just I'll just text him like as I'm walking, like because my head's already down, just texting and like on on the sixth floor when you get here. <laughs> Shove my phone back <laughs> in my pocket, keep trudging in that direction. Uh, there, we'll there be... now, Charlie. <laughs> Will Charlie be taking the elevator to get to the sixth floor? The elevator will cut into my trudging, but sure. <laughs> uh, so you hit the button for the elevator, and it opens, and on said elevator are three men who are dressed in, say, tactical gear. Uh, and they happen to be holding the unconscious form of Harley. Looks kind of beat up a little bit, and he's got a stake through his heart. And it's at that mm. point, we're going to take a bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we set that one up. Uh, Drew? Let's go to break. And I'm not sure if we're on break yet. <laughs> nah. But we'll just marvel at Harley yeah. for the stake in his heart. <laughs> oh. Look what they did to my boy. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have left him alone. Damn it. <laughs> this is what happens when we.
Welcome back, everybody. Some shit's going down. So, <laughs> uh, if you're just joining us, there was some uh, rather interesting stuff that happened. They went to open the elevator to go down to records, which is on the sixth floor, as we discovered, but not room 609, because that's definitely not the sex room. Despite all odds. And yeah. Crazy. <laughs> And they opened the door and or opened the elevator doors, and inside was three gentlemen wearing tactical gear, holding one of their coterie members who is staked through the heart. Charlotte kind of takes off her glasses and kind of like polishes them off, and she says, "I knew we should have taken the stairs." Charlie's just standing like dead center of the door with, like, with Florence here and Elaine right behind him. He's going to look at everybody really tensely and go. Is it too much to assume that you are bringing him here for safety? And there's no response from the three that are kind of holding up Harley, but you hear from behind them someone mm -hmm. go, apparently you don't know what exactly is going on. Would you like to inform us in a peaceful and calm manner? You have a very short amount of time to do so. She says with a smile on her face. Disappear. I would, actually. You see, we have a deal, Alexander Industries and us. And we don't like when people try to fuck around with our deals. And you see one of them kind of gets tapped on the shoulder. And they they kind of, they had Harley set up so that when the door opened, he was kind of right there. And they just let him go and he falls. Oh, he's just falling into me. I'll just sort of catch him with, with a hand really quick. And then step aside, just lean him back towards Elena. I'm going to take him. Just keep standing in the doorway. Yeah. Perhaps you can elaborate, as nothing has actually happened today. And we've only just inherited the company yesterday. So I'd like to maybe go about this a more sensible way. We do have a meeting room. I'm taking the steak out. He wakes up. As he's told. Um, I'm gonna make a willpower to avoid a uh, anger frenzy. Probably An anger idea. frenzy. I'm throwing you back into the elevator. <laughs> 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 Wrong floor. Close. Yeah. Try oh. the six. <laughs> and you'll you'll notice that uh, Harley actually has what appears to be a scalp. Freshly ripped off of someone's dome, clenched in his right fist. Good song. I'm proud of you. Whose hair is that? Yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> just staring at these at these three people because I can't see who's talking to me yet. One success. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, <clears throat> you are not happy. I'm Put holding him kind of back a little bit and just patience, my friend, patience. You see, we organized this little demonstration here to illustrate that we are not to be fucked with. And you decided to do that by intimidating one of us, all of us? Oh, we didn't intimidate just one of you. We're going to intimidate all of you. Who's we, by the way? You keep saying we pronouns. Uh, we have a deal with Pentex. You're on the wrong floor. Oh, we're on the right floor. Pentex just... is two up. We just don't like blank bodies fucking with our shit. 
and we you made a mistake making a deal with Alexander Industries. No, he he knew his plays. Would you, Would you like to discuss the arrangement that you had in a calm and nonviolent manner? Go. Fair enough. And he steps out from behind the three, and he's wearing a just. It's kind of like a. 1980s like Don you're getting a Don Johnson vibe from him he's got like the white white suit that is kind of unbuttoned a little bit on the front and, you know the suit jacket and slacks do you have a meeting room yes right this way follow me and I will lead them to the meeting room which I assume is not repaired yet uh, which meeting room? The one with the uh, hole in the door. The mm -hmm. hole in the door? <laughs> meeting room two. Uh, and meeting room two basically has kind of a werewolf-shaped head hole in the top of the door because an eight-foot door does not accommodate a nine-foot werewolf. Excuse the mess. We're renovating. Well, and I'll hang back with Harley just a little bit and kind of trying to keep him somewhat calm. We're going to talk about this later. Don't worry about it. Fucking kill every single fucking one of them. Patience. If I had it my way, they would leave out of here alive. Come now. And they, you know, go in. The, the one takes a seat, and the other three are basically around him with, you know, H and K and P5s. They are not they they look like they're ready to start shooting they do not look very comfortable at all i'm just gonna oh yeah i'll walk in and just go this doesn't really give the non-violent impression oh i we're we're going to be perfectly non-violent until such time as you decide to not non-violent for example if any of you use any of your blank powers we're gonna start shooting <laughs> that didn't go so well for the last people that tried to shoot us i think these are different people actually they are mm. but you know still have the same guns yeah right so uh the deal that we have with Pentex. Yes, Alexander. please inform us of our, our place, Mr. Maxwell is all you need to know. Mr. Maxwell, please inform us of our place because we'd really rather not step out of line. Both Alexander Industries and Pentex had deals with us to remove their enemies. And he looks like he's like kind of testing for dust to see if there's any dust kicking around. It's like And what enemies would those be? And for note for the other players, Charlie is unnaturally calm and has maintained eye contact with this guy since the elevator opened. Yeah, I noticed. I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> what enemies would those be? Oh, um, uh... Other blanks, which you may or may not be on that particular list. We haven't actually decided yet. If you make the same deal with us that they did, then you might actually be spared. See, there was kind of a deal when we first showed up in Vancouver between the wolves and the blanks and uh, we took care of a lot of them 
but unfortunately, your kind seems to breed like cockroaches. So let me, I'll just apologetically hold a hand up towards like Charlotte. Let me make sure that I understand. Uh, you had a deal with Alexandra Industries to remove their enemies, mm. at which point now you have come here and are saying that if we don't take the deal that you had to remove Alexander Industries' enemies, we, the current board of Alexander Industries, will be Alexander Industries' enemies that you are to remove? Oh, you'll be our enemies. There's oh, you're difference. just intimidating and extorting us. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted like to, to make sure we were on the same page. Elena is starting to kind of circle just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like as you like, because it's basically a long uh, table. Mm -hmm. As you kind of make it to the one point, they're definitely kind of moving in. Like one of the guys is kind of splitting off a little bit, and he's making sure that you cannot make it behind <laughs> them because that would be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not be too hasty. I'm sure that we can work out some sort of deal. What? I'm sorry, I still don't know exactly who you guys are, so I can't be sure of how I can help you. I'm sure that you've heard of us. I'm sure that you've heard of the Inquisition. I take that scalp and I stuff it in the still open steak wound in my chest. And I just kind of like with it down. That was gross. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like cockroaches. You're not being very polite right now. And it doesn't you're, make for good business to insult the people that you want to. Very insult. insulting. Very insulting. And you did not approach the situation in a very kind manner. Which I don't appreciate at all. Yeah. Um, you're familiar with your kind, right? Relatively. Uh, amongst your kind, has nice words ever really worked? Well, it's not fair to uh, judge an entire group of people just by some other ones you've met, we've just met today, and I think nice words will work swimmingly on us. <laughs> We're very pleasant. Love conversation. In that case, do you Absolutely. want to survive the oncoming storm? Which one? Because I think there's a couple uh, storm systems moving into our area. There have been some options. See, my superiors, they want to keep the body count flowing. So I decided I like setting up my targets. If there's a deal, then we can kind of come to a mutual consensus. You give us names and locations and power levels and we take care of the problem. My bosses are happy, I'm happy, you're potentially happy, and then we can essentially move our separate ways. You see, that sounds all very reasonable. Why uh, open with the heart stakes? <laughs> Just to let you know we're serious. So we didn't wrong you yet, right? Just checking. Not necessarily. Okay, you're just heavy-handed. That's fine. That's you fine. Know, I like that. The last people that wanted to make a deal with us, they just showed up for a meeting. They had a werewolf, but that was it. And storyteller note, Lawrence is nowhere to be seen right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh... 
So having a werewolf there mm. is not intimidating. He was very well behaved, actually, despite my nervousness yes. about him. A little dirty. Very well behaved and did not um, show up with uh, a stake in the hearts of a friend of mine, which is not a smart thing to do. A little it's clumsy, and I'll point out the door. <laughs> I start not, digging not in. Smart at all. I start digging in between the scales on my face, and I'm not taking my eyes off the jackass in the suit. <laughs> Calm down. It's all right, patience. Let's all gonna... let's all be careful. We can only handle one thing at a time today, and we already had something planned. I don't think that these gentlemen have anything to do with Pantex, so I don't think it should affect our plans for the rest of the day. I don't know. He made a comment about a deal with Pentex mm -hmm. as well. He have deals with Pentex as well. It sounds like a similar deal to the one we're being offered. I, I don't want my <laughs> shit back. My bag. Did you take things that are going to make it very hard to do the thing that you want to strike a deal with us about, Mr. Maxwell? Because that's also very difficult to follow up on. And he does like a hand motion towards one of the guys and they kind of like out of their backpack, they take out Harley's backpack and hand it to Harley. And you just carry his backpack. I take the backpack, I grab the scalp or the, the scalp out of my chest and I Toss it at Maxwell. Who's, who's the one who staked my friend? Are you I'm trying, trying to hit Maxwell with it? In the general vicinity. Okay, um, just have it like flop in front of him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A returning of belongings. Exactly. <laughs> Square it's deal. It's a trade. We're yeah. trading. <laughs> this is friendly. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why we can't keep this friendly, but... I would also like to know this actually. I pointed out Elena and I just go, which one did uh, stake him? And I'll like, I'll like at, talk to each one of like each one of the three standing up. Did you do it or was it you or perhaps it was you? This is very important information just, that we need to know. Just tell once us as a show of good the, faith. Once you get to the third guy, the mm -hmm. guy that, um, that had the backpack, mm -hmm. yeah, he kind of, he's mm -hmm. the one that looks, like he's kind of doesn't want to answer that particular question. It would be nice to be on the same page across the board. And I'm, I'm talking directly at him now. Yeah, nice to be on the same page across the board and make sure that there's no misunderstandings of who's where. Oh, oh right. I would like to point one thing out. You see, was that him that said right? Sorry, was that the guy that said right, or is that Max Weller? Uh, that was uh, Maxwell that said okay. right. Okay, yeah, because I'm talking at the, the dude still. Sorry, Elena, go ahead. I would like to just, you see, you came to want to, you wanted to intimidate us. You, you came here with my friend and you staked them. And there was really no call for that because nobody has made any movement against you yet. However, if you want to keep this civil, then... I think it is only fair that there is an exchange of equal suffrage. I mean, and what's this guy to you? You can, I'm sure, afford to lose one, right? <laughs> it's so hard to train. I'm just going to tell you now, it is only fair that there is an exchange of equal suffrage. You want to keep this civil? You want to be on the same page? Oh, are we not being civil? I mean, and... and to be fair, as soon as he says, are we not being civil? That's mm -hmm. when the other two kind of, you hear the mm -hmm. of them readying their weaponry. <laughs> How many gun guys are there? Stop, three. Stop. There's three young guys. Yeah, there's three. And I'm saying, to be fair, you didn't kill our friend Harley, so we wouldn't be, I don't believe that Elena's asking for the death of any of your No, I would never. No, but, I said equal. Yeah. Actually, I just watched this wonderful foreign film, and what they did when somebody was wronged is they took a finger. Well, this, okay. I would very much so just like to hold his hand. That's all I need. Just to hold his hand. Right. You're not That's taking it. And, and, would that, and would that be your hand? I'm talking again to the, the third guy that doesn't seem to want to mm. answer. Is that your hand that she wants to 
that wants to hold for a minute. Yeah, or... he's he's slowly kind of <laughs> inching back. Yep. You were so brave a moment ago. What are you doing now? He's so quiet, uh, isn't he? He doesn't like to. So very quiet. Like to talk. Why is he moving away? I think he Your might. Dog's afraid. under control. My dog is entirely under control. It's really hard to train cockroaches. <laughs> you see, the thing is. Let me uh, remind you three here. There was one more guy with you. Where did he go? Oh, that's right. I ripped off his fucking hair. I ripped out his throat. And then I stomped on his jaw until it broke. At which point and I'll turn to Elena and go, I think we might actually have a fair exchange already. <laughs> We might we be can, asking for a We can conceive that part the of the case, negotiation. I'll say to Maxwell. Fair point. Fair enough. This once. And she's going to look at the third one and she's going to be like, don't worry. You're safe for now. Fuck up again, though. Why don't you tell us what deal this is in more detail? You said you wanted us to get information about people, but I don't really hear the who people whoever happens to be your enemies our enemies i'm not i'm not a stickler for who exactly ends up being dead i don't care just so long as the bodies keep piling up and you know quotas need to be met and all that I mean, we could just take all of you. See, there you go again with the threatening and the not calm negotiation. And it makes me very uncomfortable. And it, I don't know about the rest of you. I'll just look at everybody. But it makes me feel really dissatisfied with is... the negotiation. Yeah, and that's somebody who civil. is concerned with the comfort of my employees. Um, I feel like you're, you're the only one sending us messages. And I feel like it's just as fair for us to send a message back. <laughs> I think so too. I would like to say at this point, Elena has, um, I am activating the uh, arms. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> this can only end well. Yeah, I'll just go. So, uh, make that roll. Quick, uh, and for yeah, everyone quick, uh, playing the home game, this is where the negotiations kind of break down. <laughs> I was actually about to say, like, quick, uh, yeah, just quick confirmation. Uh, Charlotte, uh, you are the CEO. Uh, are we, do you think this is a good negotiation? Or maybe we're done with the negotiation? I'd say it's in my bottom five negotiations that I've been a part of. That's fair. And I'll look back and I'll go, yeah. I think we're done with the negotiation. And about the time that Elena is summoning the arms, I'm snapping my fingers under the table for Florence to yank one of the dudes under the table and activating dementation at Maxwell. Because I've been talking to him for like two fucking minutes. <laughs> and as soon as that happens. <laughs> yeah. That is fair. Dementation roll. Uh, yeah, I've made it already. So go ahead and make me, make me a, uh, what is it? It's a composure and intelligence roll for him. And I'm going for that third one. He is kind of composed and or intelligent, but not massively amount. Yep. Oh shit, my curse is returned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing you crushed him because I, I have one success. Yeah, I have seven I have seven critical, so he is uh, very impaired and demontated oh. right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. for everybody who is observing Maxwell, he just kind of goes yeah, yeah. and then he and like kind of one of the guards that had his shotgun just because with a five success on a strength on a strength check from uh, Florence, just goes thunk, under the table. Like yeah, the you, you see him, and he kind of he's as soon as he's like you know he sees the Maxwell kind of lean back in his chair and fall over. He looks, and then you see him kind of go, and then get dragged under the table. 
And, and I, I think Cassandra was going to get one of the other gunmen. Whoever the one left over is, I'll just tell him not to move and I'll use Dominic. All right. All right. Yeah, Elena was going for one gunman, I think. I was we going for the one that was sleeking away that's, that staked Harley. And, oh, and uh, Harley's, I, Harley's going after that guy as well. <laughs> yes, well, I have him. I have the arms around him, hopefully. Uh, I, I did get hungrier. Uh, yay. Uh, but yay. I got uh, two successes and two crits. For that, and so. you, you hear your sire in the back of your mind, uh, Elena. Not now. You have to uh, eat one of them, Elena. I keep telling you. Busy, eat. not now. I said not now. Eat, Elena. Not very. Well, that's definitely not a critical. So yeah, you got arms around them for the arms of Aramon. Uh, are you noticing that Harley is making a move towards them? Are you going I, to basically kind of marionette them? Yes, they are marionetted, and uh, I'm going to walk over probably as Harley's walking over, and as I said, I want that hand, which I will use Touch of Oblivion on. I think Harley's more running than anything. Oh. <laughs> um, Harley is going to use Soaring Leap, uh, once once Elena's got <laughs> see we we work well together. We, once yeah. Elena's got him set up, soaring <gasps> leap. Ah yeah. Oh, you're not gonna on back him? I'm so disappointed. No. <laughs> well. Uh, is it more yeah, of a she's... dive tackle? Like a uh oh very much so, yes. All right, we're going for the Roman Reigns esque spear. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not even gonna roll because he can't move. He's up there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so. This is okay. going to be bad. I can you, tell. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to roll for this one, sir? Uh, let's go with you're going to do Soaring Leap. Yeah. Let's go Strength and Brawl. Uh, okay. Are you going to activate any other potence power? Uh, that is the only other potence power that he has. All righty. gonna hide behind the same couch i hid behind for the first time <laughs> uh that's a different room oh then the that next closest Cassandra's couch. office if charlotte oh, charlotte's sorry, office I'm, for charlotte's office yeah i'm gonna or rouse Cassandra's. to up my strength by one and that succeeds one two three four <laughs> five successes jesus uh, for the arms, for Elena, can you, um, would they have, would, would you want to do any damage with them, like, as you're gripping, or? You... Um, mm, I might take off his <laughs> wrists. <laughs> well, I'm all fine. <laughs> oh, as, I would probably, if, as Harley is making his way over, um, I would probably squeeze maybe at the wrists and And, let and him you have got at that six successes. Essentially, yes. <laughs> um, as the body is kind of like it, it basically gets held up by the arms of Araman, which snake out of the wall and kind of grab around his wrists. Um, as everybody else kind of sees this happening, the body kind of it looks like a release is set like he, he's almost let go and it takes everybody else kind of a, a couple seconds to realize or like a split second to realize that he wasn't actually let go by the arms of airman his arm his hands were ripped off mm. by the arms of airman and he kind of slumps forward just as harley is dive tackling towards him and essentially you got five successes mm -hmm. yeah you essentially cut the poor son of a bitch in two. Um, yeah, this is clean up and... So one guy two. is left now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one guy's left. Um, one guy's left. Are those hands, are those hands floating there? <laughs> uh, those hands are basically kind of floating there, like the yeah. arms. <laughs> Charlotte's going to walk over to the hands and kind of like see if she can pick them Yeah, pick I'll them let you have the hands. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I always wanted a pair of these. 
and she's gonna go over to the remaining guard who's uh, who was told to freeze. Yes. And uh, she's going to tuck the hands in his pocket, and she's going to say, "Oh no, I can't believe Pentex did this. <laughs> <laughs> this is like some sort of." Declaration of war. I think you should tell your entire Inquisition about what happened here. Are you using dominates? Yes. Oh <laughs> my god. Something mesmerized to me. I can't have figured. Oh my god, it's fantastic. <laughs> that is the best use of dominate I've seen in a long time. Um, if you hadn't done that, I was just going to go and touch his face. <laughs> Oh, we still have Maxwell, who on that note, while all this is going on, Charlie just rounded the table and picked up like the psychotic break Maxwell. Just lifting up and just onto the table, just sliding him across the table back in our direction. Just very calmly walking with this guy sliding along the table, having a psychotic fit. He is or rambling like a bunch of <laughs> incoherent shit. Like, yep. uh, uh, the Pope. Uh, I'm gonna flip oh, him uh, over and just like, I Plant his forehead against the plant his head against the table with his forehead. Just look at him and just go. Maybe you should tell me more specifically who sent you and where they are. Uh, and I'm I'm not using anything. It's just straight manipulation, intimidation at this point on this okay. psychotic great guy. Just um, tell me more about this so deal. Roll for that one. All right. And I'm not going to roll in defense. Like, I know I went and got my dice during the break, but I didn't I don't really need them. Five critical. You guys are rolling so well that it's like, fuck it. Yeah, yeah five, <laughs> five critical. I roused manipulation for that human patient, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's like, you broke him, though. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, so. Yeah, but I'm kind of broken, too, so I'll get what I can get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you get from that particular, like, you kind of, there, there's a little bit of Malkavian-ness that you kind of are able to get through uh, the haze of just inane bullshit that's coming out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you get that the Second Inquisition is connected to the church. Mm -hmm. And that is this particular branch of the Second Inquisition. The rest of you, on the other hand, hear... Uh, he's saying, he's like, the Pope, uh, oh no, uh, it's uh, uh, the stake, uh, Nicolas Cage, I just, uh, I don't know what. Yeah. Now, look, is there a local church that's involved, or are we just talking big picture here? Uh, you, you would think it would be more like a big picture. Okay, that's fair. Like and organizational church type stuff. Is that... Okay, and I'll, I'm going to look up at, at, at the rest of it, and I'll just like Charlotte, you know, explaining to this other dude that Pentex put out a hit, and I just go, so we don't really need Mr. Maxwell here anymore, right? Mm-mm. Okay. We only need one. Okay, that's good, because I don't like fascists. I'm going to bring my elbow down on him with four successes. <laughs> Uh, so you set him up basically so that his forehead was near the table. It, no, he he was laying on the table already, like head plant head planted on it, and I just brought my elbow straight down on like on top of his head. Okay, so you're trying to like give him a you know. Little, I'm trying to see if I can. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can put elbow. my elbow through his head. Give him a little bit of uh, chiropractic. Sure. Like, <laughs> bend his head the wrong way, type. You know, thing. the unlicensed kind. But yeah, that's four yeah. successes on us. <laughs> That's four uh, I'm going to give him kind of an ins instinctive role. Sure. Like a self preservation. <laughs> what the f mm -hmm. fuck? <laughs> but he has none. Yeah, he clearly, in his current state, has no self preservation whatsoever. And his, the rest of you hear kind of a sickening <laughs> as, <laughs> you know, his head goes in a way that it's not really supposed to go. Um, and for the other guard, what did you roll for the mesmerism? Uh, for the rouse, I succeeded. So, okay, because he's just uh, immortal, right? Yeah, he's well. He, there's actually some resistance that you're catching. Oh, so do you want me to roll? I do indeed. Okay, got to make that manipulation domination. Good thing I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> These are the semi-smarter. 
more resilient ones that they had trained that, you know, they're going to send into a group of vampires. Now, for fuck's sake. Hmm. Elena will look at uh, Charlie when he does that, and she's just going to walk over and casually just like... Ooh, actually, I can do this now, so I can actually readjust this down and show everybody that I've got... Ah, fucking zero successes. <laughs> like there is nothing there. Yeah, that's there not, good. not that's not fucking... gonna be my six. No. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. That yeah. Uh your six is way, way more than what that was. And I'm just gonna readjust myself a little bit there. There we go. Uh yeah, you like mentally you're playing hopscotch with his like brain. Really, oh just, no, I can't believe it. This is it's so your annoying. Play pen. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. uh so uh are you going to like basically relieve the um don't move? She said she said you should go tell all of your inquisition people that Pentex did this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then at that point he's going to run off. Like he is basically covered in blood. There's like two hands that are kind of flopping in his pot in his like tactical just vest pockets like he it's it's a bad scene yeah i'll just i'll stand up cut in half i don't know what i'll i'll, 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 just, I'll just stand up and just look down at the at, at the former max so i'll just i don't like authoritarianism charlie i didn't realize some of the numbers mm-hmm. that you counted were the weights you lift <laughs> <laughs> elena's gonna walk over to charlie and she's just gonna look at him and she's like you know i'm very glad i did not eat you I've got kind of a history with authoritarianism. It's not good. Are you and secretly super jacked? And I'll look at my elbow, just like coat in blood and stuff. Anybody have a tide stick? <laughs> That's why you shouldn't wear white. On the plus side, though, your elbow smells great. Nah. Sandra comes over with a tide stick and just <laughs> looking horrified by all of this violence. Thank you. So, oh, uh, I believe we have a building to sell. We should probably move all of the all of this into the fifteenth floor, which has the Pentex sign on it. If they're going to come back here looking for Pentex instead of here, that is very true. Well, it's about to be Pentex building. Yeah, but you know, in case they come back early. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fair enough. If you want to deal with the viscera. <laughs> okay, and I'll just and I'll, I'll look under the table at like Florence with like the, the guard that she just pulled under and just, just like whistle for her to drag the body. <laughs> Yeah, she kind of backing out, okay. like kind of pushing with her front paws, and then yeah, um, kind I'll, of dragging I'll him out. Pull Maxwell off the table to drag him towards the elevator, and just like kind of look at Cassandra, just go, sorry, just back, back, back to the, towards the elevator with Florence in tow. Before that happens, though, I'm mm-hmm. going to do a little storyteller comedy bit, and uh, Cassandra, can I get a Dex and Athletics roll? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, what happens if I don't have any athletics? Then you just roll, roll dex. Cool, <laughs> fun, awesome. Sure, your dex is super high. Mm-hmm. Oh. So. I got one success, and then I got the spooky one on my uh, hunger dice. So long, you, so long as you have one success, everything's fine. Um, oh, sweet, everything's fine. Well, no, everything isn't fine. Uh, oh. The Tide Stick that you're using on Charlie just is not at all getting the job done. No. Yeah, it's kind of ruining your Tide Stick, to be fair. That's why I said, sorry. Just <laughs> backed up, like, dragging Maxwell, like, towards the elevator with Florence dragging that guard. I, I cannot account for the one that Harley has, but I'm just going to the elevator. <laughs> well, the two pieces that Harley has. Yeah. I'm just kind of standing there, just. Oh. I told it's you it's quite visceral. Like, yeah, you've got like, there's like, you know, intestines kind of draped over your shoulder because you kind of didn't quite separate it too much. Mm-hmm. I hand him the Tide pen. <laughs> you good? To Cassandra, you good? Okay. Yes. All right. What else are you going to do? Do you want a massage from my ghost friend? No. Okay, no, we'll I st- don't. I'll, I'll get the cliff notes later. Look, um, 
I've got the perfect idea for thing one and thing two here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to need a couple of garbage bags. Sandra. <laughs> for note. Poor Sandra. Since, since, they're doing, since they're doing this, Charlie and Florence made it to the elevator already. Uh, if they're not following, I'm literally just like, I'm, sta I'm standing both of them up, hitting 15. <laughs> and the moment that we get to 15 and the door opens, I'm just hitting unseen passage and letting them fall out of the elevator before before I like, before like, I just have like, I just hit it and we go back down. <laughs> You're not even gonna get out. Yeah, just so it's not, just so it's not entirely on me. And uh, yeah, uh, succeed in my rouse check and that. So just gonna be unseen as the bodies go onto the 15th floor. the bodies, floor. yeah, just fall in. Okay. I think I thought I think the 15th floor is empty except it said Pentex. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. It did say Pentex. Yep. Um so for Charlotte, uh you hear like a beep and then like a little thing opens up on the desk that you were standing beside. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh can we have a garbage bag? Two garbage bags. Two two garbage bags. It's easier to carry that way. Two garbage bags. Oh, and, okay. And uh, after you bring the garbage bags, can you pack up my things? Where we won't be coming back. But you didn't actually really bring any things with you. My one thing. Or your one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then, like a uh, couple minutes later, Sandra shows up with two, like heavy duty, like ultra thick barrel lining like garbage bags. Elena's just gonna cross her arms and be like, this is all of you. I'm not doing anything. Nope, I'm I'm already messy with a not. little bit more. And I grab one chunk of dude and throw it in the bag, grab the other chunk, throw it in the other, and then I'm down on my hands and knees and I'm trying to scoop up as much chunkage as I can into the bags. And once they're full. Um, I'm gonna um, meander. I, I'm gonna go to the 29th floor. I'll and just I... cross Harley. I'm just, like <laughs> the, door, the door opens and Florence comes out, but like Harley's still obfuscated, just walks right right past him. Yeah, uh, yeah. The door opens. There's like a little bit of a blood stain near the door, and you know it kind of looks like uh, the blood stain itself kind of got dragged out of the elevator but yeah you see florence trot happily out of the door just yeah, walk right past harley harley's busy <laughs> I, I i i kind of instinctually yeah oh florence is here charlie has got to be around as well so, hey. somewhere probably yeah so to no one in particular good work that was amazing yeah it's nice to see that when push comes to shove we can all handle ourselves I'll just go, thank you, and accidentally drop off your skate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Florence uh, sits down, like the tail wags a little bit, and, you know, she does the <laughs> looking up at you. Just pet. I'm going to attempt to pet Florence. <laughs> be nice. Why do you guys do this to me? Be nice. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm giving a command, just be nice. Charisma and animal can? Yeah. <laughs> do I have time to shit? <laughs> <laughs> What's her difficulty again? Let me check. It's gonna be perfect. You and I have a different definition of the word perfect. <laughs> unless unless there's criticals being rolled. Uh I did not get a critical, but I did succeed. How uh, many? Two, six, two. <laughs> Florence's willpower is two for what it's worth, so. Uh it, Florence is very hesitant. Yeah. Like, Just very little scratch hesitant. on the ear, little pet. And then after you move your hand back from Florence, like Florence kind of backpedals behind <laughs> Charlie. Just look, I'll just look at the remaining people and just go, sorry, I, I got upset with the, the, and the stuff. And as well you should, mm -hmm. don't ever apologize for being upset. Sorry. Let's look, look at look at Cassandra. Stop apologizing. Look at there's look at Cassandra who's you know, with the tide pen and the freaked out look. Sorry. <laughs> You're sure with her tide pen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. 
Don't apologize, Charlie. You did well. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I haven't had to use training in a bit, so good. It came in handy. We're yeah. learning about each other today. So, in the elevator, hitting 29. We're going to the 29th floor, which I do meat believe room. is our meat room. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, you didn't actually see what is on the other side of the elevator door, though, from the 29th floor, because you were going up the stairs at the time Mm -hmm. when we saw the meat room. So, it takes an abnormally long time to, once it hits 28, it's almost like there's extra layers that you would have to go through. Uh, But Eventually, you know, it dings, the door is open, and you see quite the sight on the other side of those doors. Uh, It looks like you are stepping, if you're going to be stepping, I'm going to assume you're not going to be stepping in at this particular point in time. No. (laughs) Uh, But what you see is kind of a corridor, and in said corridor, you can basically make out that there are, like, ribs in the corridor and there are like strings of like meaty substance that are kind of dripping and almost looks like a black ichor okay i thought this would have taken me to a lobby of some kind but this is the works. lobby <laughs> is that is that what you're saying yeah the lobby of the body and you yeah. hear Oh, but this is the lobby. I throw the bags and I'm fucking... <laughs> Get... ah! meat. So what you throw meat? the the bags in. Uh, are you using? I'm guessing potents. No, I'm. This? I'm just. No, this is. I, I need to get the fuck out of here as soon as Sheer possible. Sheer unadulterated panic. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, as the doors close, uh, you. I'm assuming you're trying to glance out to make sure that nothing follows you into the elevator. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> down at the end of the corridor, there's kind of like a, a section that looks like it splits off. And around one of the corners, you see something, I want to say, that looks like it's dressed like a 17th century aristocrat. But Its head is elongated and it looks like it's partially made of bone and there are like bone kind of spikes that are around it and it's got elongated arms. But you're leaving so soon and the doors close. Um... Somebody in the chat put Meat Room was my favorite character. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Mine too. If, if we're renting the 29th floor oh to fucking God. Andre, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, could I could I roll to see if I can? I mean, metagaming, I have a pretty damn good idea what that is, but no, I would it like to, is. Oh my God. In character, I would like to suss out if I could at least tell what that thing was. Uh, that would be, let's go with an intelligence and a cult. Okay. And metagaming, I also know what I think you know that I know that you know <laughs> about what's in the meat room. Yeah. I have to change the lights because I have... To... Oh, okay. Now I can see my red dice. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's kind of tricky if you're going all red with your lights. <laughs> right. It's like, what the fuck do my hunger dice say? I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. One, two, two, five, two, two, two. You, um, you have theories. You've heard of a clan that is mostly Sabat that is known as the Zemissi. Okay, I'm. 
I'm going to file that away, and we've got a problem up on 29. Oh, dear God, do we have a fucking problem on 29? And just replace Ooh. the 29th floor in the elevator with nope stickers, <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, wait, this is a fucking panic attack. <laughs> Did you get to meet anybody? Uh, yeah, uh, Harley comes back down in the elevator. <laughs> we have a problem. Oh God, what now? Is it our problem? We, we, we just handled the problem. Yeah. What is it, Harley? Um, the, 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 the really freaky other Sabat clan, the, the Chimis, the Chim, Chizigus. Would I know this? <laughs> uh, yeah, you would definitely know that. It's, he's I'm just trying get to wide apparently. Chizigus. He's, yeah, you, you definitely realize he's trying to axe murder the word Zemissi or Tismas, okay, whatever the hell they're called. Z I don't even know. Zemishi. Zemishi. What's about them? We've got one on 29. Elena's booking it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> well, we're, uh, I'm following. They're nope. leaving anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll nope. call to Harley as he's going like, did, did you get all the stuff you needed from the office? Oh. <laughs> Elena's nope. And she is cursing in like in Spanish the whole fucking way out. She's And I'll just I'll nope. just look at Cassandra and Charlotte. And no, go, no, no. I think they're leaving. Looks that way. It seemed like a scary <laughs> word that he was trying to say. We should probably go too. Didn't so are you taking here? the elevator? I thought so. I would I would be taking the elevator down the fastest way down? Just checking. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that a bad idea? No, See, no, you stop. You know those signs that say "in emergency use stairs." <laughs> In case of Zemissi, use the stairs. Fuck. <laughs> Jokes on you. The stairs are also Zemissi. <laughs> Everything's point, probably. Um, oh, Jesus. So <laughs> you get to the elevator. And you hit the button, and Harley would be the one who would probably notice this first, but the elevator numbers are going down from above you. Oh, uh, no, no, get, no, no, <laughs> no. Why? No, get stairs, 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 now. Okay. And I'll just, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally take, like, Cassandra's hand and Charlotte's hand and just start, like... Before you get a chance stairs. to leave the front of the elevator, mm -hmm. the door is open, and you see the exact same thing standing in front of you. But you are leaving so quickly. I will release their hands. And that's where we'll building. probably end off this particular episode. <laughs> and it's just wide-eyed like, oh, fuck. Like, no, 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 no. I said, no, I told you already. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hashtag meat elevator. Meat. <laughs> <laughs> we've got meat room. We've got meat elevator. We've got meat everything. It's a, oh it's a meat God. world. <laughs> everything is it's, meat. It's when hard out there. When you said there was a fucking voice, I was like, oh, dear God. Oh, no. It's hard out there when everything's made of meat. That floor. No. <laughs> glad none of your predator types are like farmer. Tune in next week for the next heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Elena needs to feed because yeah. she is hungry. <laughs> she is hungry. Uh, so I'm going to go in semi order to tell everybody where all your stuff is. And I'm going to readjust something here. What so is I can type it into the chat. Um, so let's go with Brennan. Hi, I'm Brennan. You can find me on Twitter at Great Black Otaku. And all my links are in the chat. They are, in fact, in the chat. Uh, Zachary? Zachary Vaudo. Uh, Fridays, I am here. Tuesdays, I am on ATL by night on Twitch. Uh, we're coming back for our next season in January, but we're going to be doing some community stuff. In the meantime, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And Wednesdays, I will be over on Gehenna Gaming at around 7 p.m. Eastern for Cult Echoes. And that'll be all through December. And Samantha? 
Hi, Samantha McLarty, um, and you can find me at all those lovely little links in the chat now, right below. There you go. Um, I will also be doing some stuff with uh, Martlet Games um, so very, very, very soon. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, that's all I got. Speaking of Martlet Games, Patrick. Hi, I'm Patrick Gill, creative director of Martlet Games. Uh, got a lot of stuff, kind of cooking in the background. Uh, we're currently rerunning our first season of our very first actual play chronicle, Sioux City by Night. Um, we're kind of hopscotching as far as schedule. Uh, we, we picked a bad day to start that. Um, but otherwise, we've got all sorts of shenanigans going on over on our Twitch. Um, I believe this Tuesday, uh, my uh, accomplice Sarah will be doing commentary for my playthrough of Bloodlines, and she's having a good old fashioned rage fest at it. And yes, I'm looking forward to working with Sam too. This is going to be an mm -hmm. awesome boat ride. All right. And Alex. Hi, I'm Lex. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at a redhead vixen. Um, and I will be back on Tuesday for Cult Sinners and Saints Season 2. Murder Nun. Yeah, Murder Nun in the house. Murder Nun. Ah, murder my nun. phone is yeah. being stupid. Murder Sorry. <laughs> More Murder Nun. Echo. More Murder Nun, yes. <laughs> this, was, this was a very... I I don't I'm even doing know way from more there. violence there than I do here. Yeah, even no. even your phone is like wanting the murder nun to show up. Right. So <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, I am storyteller Steve. Uh, my links are in the chat. I don't know when they're going to be popping up, but uh, you can pick up some level up dice in that particular link that just popped in there. Uh, and we are coming back tomorrow for the Vancouver by Night actual the main coterie because this is the c team because everybody has c in their names uh not because we're bad at it yeah uh <laughs> joining us tomorrow will be someone named brennan williams hey. what what yeah yeah wow <laughs> that's not friday the baron of surrey named jacobs and they're gonna go meet the baron of surrey named jacobs and everything's gonna go silky smooth Nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be anything that's going to be weird or happening. It's totally going to be super serious. Yes, yeah. it's super serious because we're the world of darkness and mm -hmm. that's what we do. Uh, so join us tomorrow, 6 p.m., same time as this one started. Next week, we're going to be back here and um, we're going to see who the bone spur giant creature mm -hmm. thing is. I think you know. Are I you know. Friend? That you know that what I know that you know. Um, I have so a yeah, vague idea. <laughs> Maybe I'll eat him. Um, hey, sure there's a plan. <laughs> All right. So come back and see us next week for that. Uh, <laughs> the links will be somewhere in the chat, and we're going to see if we can raid somebody. Let's see who is available for raiding. Uh, oh, that game is still playing. All right, so let's uh, hop over to a raid, and we will see you next week. Same time, same channel, and thanks for coming. You guys all rock. Bye. Bye. Bye.